one of the biggest obstacles, barriers, problematunities, has been the growth that we've had. Um, as we started out in a district that had, I believe by the time we began um, in continuous improvement, we had six campuses. And we were still a small family and knew each other and had been around each other. And so it was very easy to assimilate the new people coming in because we had such a strong core of the people who had been on the journey. And then all of a sudden we began to open two campuses a year and sometimes three every year. And that was a lot of new people coming into our district from all over. Now, many of them had heard of us, and they knew something was going to be different when they got here. But knowing that intellectually and feeling that in your core as to what I do with that and how different is it really, and what are the expectations that are different than what I'm used to, and what do you mean the superintendent's going to be with his us here during this learning with our new staff for two days he's going to teach us that was a message in itself yeah the leander way it, and that uh, was a term that that actually uh took us a long way and and what it did was allowed us to um present all of these guiding documents and the processes that we used uh, to help people understand who we were and, and how we operated. And Monta brought up a very good point about the fact that, you know, we would, we would bring in 200, 250 new teachers every year. And what we learned early on is that you can't just bring those people in and throw them onto a campus and let everybody use what they think the organization is about to, to help uh, enculturate them. So one of the things we did early on was made sure that we spent some time with those new people uh, centrally to help them understand the, the overarching philosophy of the district and, and how we expected them to go about their daily activities and to, and to educate kids and in turn what they could expect from us. So we, we spent some time with them trying to help them understand what the Leander Way was. As I said, I've been in the district for a very long time and I have seen the student enrollment grow from less than 2,000 students to over 30,000 students and um, it's accelerated. So it has that while it started off with some pretty steady growth within the last 10 to 15 years, it's been exponential. That, um, and, and I think everybody has challenges. I mean, it's also a challenge if you have no growth and you're trying to improve a system. So everybody has their own challenges and uh, I think that's why the continuous improvement tools and strategies, um, rather than looking for a, a recipe approach, it gives you the tools to solve whatever problems you have. So um, I, I think the, the problems probably, the challenges that faced us in addition to our, cha our changing different demographics, just rapidly trying to imagine bringing in um, normally w within the last, I would say, it's been pretty steady for the, about the last five years, we're bringing in 300 to 350 new teachers into our system every year. That's a huge influx of people who don't understand your culture, who don't have the background, and I think our, our early um, inclination was to try and cram 15 years of learning in, in, into their heads in, in two days, and of course that's highly effective in terms of just making everybody glassy-eyed and not being able to retain anything. So uh, I think the guiding documents also helped us distill what's the most important thing that people to, new to our, our system need to walk out with. But growth in general, in, in the big scheme of things, has caused us to, I think, be more purposeful. We had had this little family for a number of years, and we knew each other. We, 
we had built that trust, we had built that relationship, we had fun together, we learned together. But every year we were bringing this influx of new people who didn't know the language, who didn't understand what we were doing, even though they could recognize, even going through an interview, that there was something different here. And I think I want to be a part of it, but I don't know what it is. Um, in our, we, we approached that in several ways. With our new staff that we hired every year, we brought them in a week before everyone else reported back to work and went through a week of staff development, both in their campuses, on their in their departments, um, but mostly concentrating here on the campus and the, the educational part of it with our teachers. And we told our story. And while we were telling this story, we were using the vocabulary, which we knew that they would get some of, but we were hoping that when they would come out on the other end and they were back on their campuses and working with their teams, that they would say, oh, I heard about that somewhere. I can make a connection now. And we modeled. You know, I, somewhere I read about the fact that the more words a child hears, the faster they will learn the language. And so our job was to give as many opportunities to our staff to hear the words so that they could begin to learn the language and to, for us to model so that there was a connection with those words, with the concepts of what we were doing. And our new teachers got that in a, within the, the four and a half days that they, were, that they were here before everyone else came. The other thing we did with them is when they were hired, we sent them a book. We welcomed them to the district and said, here's a book we want you to read. And the book was called Heroes. And it's a very easy way to read about continuous improvement when you're not even sure that you're reading about continuous improvement and systems and how systems work and how you look at the processes to improve the systems. And it's a fun read, but more than that, it's a message. We're sending you a book. This book is yours. We want you to read it before you report to work. That's a big message to give out. And I think it has stood as well in then what happened next with our new staff. I use, um, I use the analogy of, of something that it's a highly scientific theory I came up with called the St. Augustine approach to um, improvement, to change. And in, in, in Texas, if, you're, if you have a lot of money, you can sod your, your lawn by just covering it, you know, with, the, with, with uh, pieces of grass. But if, if you have a large area, you just simply can't afford to do that. So you take little things they call plugs and you put them in the ground, you, you fertilize things well, you water them, and then they send out runners of, of grass that, that in fact connect with other runners, and after a certain amount of time you have a beautiful lawn. They've, it's seeded it. That's one approach we've used in that we've worked with both individuals. How can we create those plugs of change? How can we how can we um, give them the most learning, the most opportunity to, in, to interact and feedback as possible and um, allow them to, in fact, to go and send out those, those runners of uh, innovation and those runners of change so they'll begin to create those, those webs of improvement. I think that approach alone was probably all we needed when we first started. As we grew larger and with the um, rapidity, the, you know, the just how quickly things were changing, we had to be more systematic also. We, we had to look to say, where are we beginning to reach a critical mass? Where are we now saying, there are enough people that in fact uh, support this that we can say, this, this is a requirement, this is an expectation of the district and see how the, how we could work that way. So I think it was working both with individuals and at the same time working with uh, systems and beginning to, to uh, work at some common processes 
that everyone could um, support and um, agree with. 